Let's go ahead and calculate the totals in our meal queue, which means basically taking all of the recipes that are in our meal queue, more specifically, the ingredients that are in those recipes, right? These ingredients right here, and actually calculate them all together. Now we do have an issue that's coming through on the actual detail view. So let's actually fix that real quick. It's a really simple fix. We're just gonna jump into our templates here and go into recipes and partials detail. And so inside of this part right here, I just wanna change this out to being include and recipes, partials and ingredient inline.html. And then we'll just go ahead and say, you know, with object equals to ingredient. Okay, and that should speed up the loading process. The, the reason it was taking so long before is because I was calculating all of those conversions on demand. I don't actually need to do that, uh, especially in this case. Now, I also might wanna have the ability to add additional ingredients. So going into create-update, I can now just copy these things. And since it's all in HTMX, I can just add that in, maybe not on each for loop here. So we'll save that. There we go, that's a little bit better. But let's also make it, you know, bootstrap ready because we're gonna combine some stuff here. So first off, we'll create a row and then I'll just do a div class column 12 and column MD8 for the first one. And then the second one, we'll do div class column 12 and column MD4. This should be eight, not nine. Okay, and so what I wanna do is of course, move these things down a little bit. We'll leave the ingredients in the side column. That way it just looks just a little bit better. There we go, a little bit closer to our edit. But of course now we actually want to combine these things for all of my meals, right? So if I have three meals in there, I wanna be able to manually or automatically rather uh, add them in and then manually change what I might need to change in the future. So let's go ahead and do this. First off, let's go up to our meals and I'm gonna create example underscore calc dot pi. And of course we wanna calculate our meals here. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our user. So from django.contrib.auth, we're gonna import our git user model. And in my case, it's gonna be something like this. And then j equals the user dot objects dot first. Okay. So of course there's ways to actually get all of the meals that are in here from this user, right? So meal set dot all dot pending. That is certainly one way to do it, uh, but I'm gonna be a little bit more explicit. So I'll go ahead and import the model itself. So from meals.models, we're gonna import the meal. And then we'll just do our queue is equal to meal.objects by user of j and then pending, okay? Cool, so that should give us our queue, right? No surprise here. Now, since the meal itself, right? If we go into models, we have a foreign key to recipes and recipe ingredients, the thing that we actually need to calculate on, of course, has a foreign key to recipes as well, which means that the meal objects are also corresponding or related to the recipe ingredients. So what I wanna do is just say IDs equals to, I'll first off do, q.values list of just simply recipe underscore underscore id and we'll say flat equals to true. This of course would give me all of my recipe ids and then from there I could of course filter this down. I'm not going to do it but I'll, I could do something like this and this would be recipe id equals to this query set, right? Easy enough but of course that's not what I want. Instead what I want to do is I want to actually use the recipe ingredients. And that ID, okay? And so now, of course, the IDs I will use, but no longer the recipe ID, but just simply those IDs there. Now, the reason, of course, I can do this is because of those foreign keys and all those reverse relationships. So to make this a little bit more of an efficient lookup, I just do dot prefetch related and I, prefetch all of the related items based off of this. Okay, so I break that down a little bit. And so this will give me all of those recipe ingredients, of course. So from that, I can actually get my data and say qs.values, and we can grab the name 
the unit and maybe the quantity as float. Now these are actual field names here, right? And so if we look at the recipe ingredient field, we have this quantity of, as float that should be calculated every time on save, right? Assuming that it's even possible, it will calculate it, otherwise we'll set it to none, which is great. That's fine with us. And so we could also set it to zero potentially, but we'll leave it in as none. And so this will give me that data. So I can do 4D in data and print out what that data is or that D is. I'm gonna go ahead and do Python manage.py shell to test all this, assuming it all works. Looks like we are getting a value error in here somewhere. Perhaps I didn't actually, in, ah, I didn't define a recipe ingredient. Of course I didn't. Let's go ahead and bring it in. So from recipes.models, we're gonna import that recipe ingredient and let's try to get. Okay. So now it's actually giving me this error here. So it's not actually allowing me to be exact on here. I'm gonna get rid of the quantity as float for a moment. And let's go ahead and try it again. And that's not the problem. The lookup was the problem. This should be ID in the IDs here, which is what it's saying. Okay, um, now let's try that again. And there we go. Okay, so this gives me all of the data, right? So naturally we can loop through this stuff and calculate each item here, especially if they have corresponding names and units, right? The, the unit part is actually really important, I think, for the corresponding values, which we'll see in a moment. But what I can do is instead of looping through to calculate everything, right? So like grabbing, you know, the quantity as float and if the name's correct and all that stuff, um, like that seems like a little bit of a mess. So what I can do then is I can actually get rid of this value here. And instead we can, well, let's go ahead and annotate. And we can say the total is equal to well, it's gonna be eventually equal to some value related to quantity as float. In our case, we want to sum up that quantity as float. So we're gonna go ahead and do from django.db.models. We're gonna import the sum here. And so we wanna set the new value of total, the new field, if you will. Um, it's not actually a field on the model, of course. That's why I named it total. You could call it a whole lot of things, uh, but uh, total also makes sense in this case. I'm gonna go ahead and sum up that value. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do print or for D in data. Now we'll go ahead and print out our data. Okay, so again, I'll go ahead and copy all this. Let's just exit out of here and run it again. And there we go. So now it's actually calculating everything. And notice two things that are roughly the same. Right, so we've got a chicken breast with a unit of ounces and a chicken breast with a unit of pound, and those are different. That is why we actually do these values here, then annotate. So essentially what it's gonna do is group things together by name and unit, and then annotate. If I got rid of unit in here, what's gonna happen is it's gonna calculate these things together then. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy everything, paste it in here, and now it's just giving me chicken breast of three which perhaps that's what we want, right? Perhaps I do wanna just round it up to something, but of course I don't have units in here and that makes things a little bit harder to purchase for. So naturally speaking, it does make sense to actually have our units in here. So then I can come in here again and look at, you know, my total, uh, my name, something a little bit closer to what our users would see, which is actually probably unit and then name, right? So this should probably be unit here. Uh, and so we can copy all that and paste it in run it again. Now it shows me, well, at least our user, hey, two ounces of chicken breast and one pound, they can make that decision for themselves. So what we wanna do now is actually calculate this for sure when our meals change. So if I add a meal, do a calculation. If I remove a meal, do a calculation. But I want it to be a lot like the meals in, in the sense that I have a status item on here. So the user themselves can say, oh, I already have salt at home. I don't need more salt or maybe they ran out of, you know, dried oregano. More, and also like just any line item itself is like, oh, teaspoon or garlic powder, maybe I just want to change that to just being, you know, actual garlic, like maybe not garlic powder or so on, 
right? So I actually wanna give some more granular control to the user themselves on this, which is why we still need to create a model to manage these inventory items um, that we want to purchase.